Good morning, KCM. Good morning, family. Good morning, Zion. We're going to open up in a word of prayer and just thank God for what He's doing in the earth. Thank God for what He's doing in our lives. And we just thank God for what He's doing in Zion. Hallelujah, Father. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come. We ask you now, Heavenly Father, forgive us of all sin and transgressions that we have committed against thee. Heavenly Father, create in us a clean heart, renew a right and steadfast spirit within us. We thank you now, Lord God, for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you for what you're doing in the earth. But Father, you are our, our Father, and we know that you know us best. We give you all the glory and all the honor, God. We pray, Lord God, this wonderful day that the words of our mouth, Lord, and meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, in the name of Jesus. God, we just ask that you be glorified in your heaven, your earth, and in the temple. We thank you for this time, Lord God. Yet it may be perilous of time, but Father God, we give you glory and honor on top of the mountain, in the middle of the mountain, and even down in the valley, we say thank you. We thank you right now, Lord, for health and strength. We thank you for wisdom and knowledge, but above all, we ask for your understanding. Holy Spirit, you are the Ruach HaKadosh of God, and we ask that you teach us and lead us this morning, Father God. What is it that you're doing in our lives? What is it that you're doing in the earth, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we fear not, God, for you know, Father God, us better than we know ourselves, for you know, Heavenly Father, that you are always in control. You never, never lose, Father. We thank you, Father God, for this word this day. We thank you for the words that have gone forth. Father, be thou glorified in your heaven, your earth, and in your temple. We thank you, Father. We love you and we adore you, Father. And we pray right now, Lord, open the ears of your people to hear. Open our eyes that we may see. Lord, we know that you will be glorified in the heavens and in the earth. And I pray right now, Lord God, that those who have an ear to hear and those who have eyes to see. But Father God, give us a heart to receive the truth of your word. We love you and we adore you, Father. We thank you now, Lord God, we thank you. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. And we bind up every spirit. Every hindering spirit that might try to come forth to hinder your people off from hearing what you are speaking to the church. In the name of Jesus. We bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now, Lord God, that we are your people. We are chosen people. We are righteous, God. We are Zion. We are the church. Lord, we are who you said we are. And we ask that you be glorified in your heaven, your earth, and yet in the temple, God. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for it all, God. Amen. I want to uh, just mention a few things today and this morning that uh, we have heard in the spirit. You know, um, last time we talked, we talked about how Father, our Father knows best and how there's nothing that, that sneaks up on him. There's nothing that, 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 that we're seeing now that he did not know of. He's Call us to repent. And so Father always knows best. And then we talked about uh, uh, from Elder Jones and Sister Jones. They talked about the inheritance, the blessings that God has spoken over his people. The blessings that God has passed down from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those blessings and no one can steal or take those blessings. Those blessings belong exactly where God said they are. Then we talked about, I think Pastor Ed, he talked about the solid rock. What are we building on? Even during this time, what are we building on? Are we building on that solid rock of foundation? Do we really trust God? Are we, our hope is in him and him alone, not in what's going on around us, but our hope is yet in him. And then uh, Pastor Dave, I believe on uh, uh, last Sunday, he spoke concerning your foundation. Hallelujah. 
Woo! Lord, the foundation. What? Check your foundation, church. Check your foundation, my sisters and brothers, because some foundations are being shaken. But will they fall if you're in standing on the solid rock? Will they fall? I say nay. They will not fall if you're trusting and believing and standing on the truth and the word of God. It will not fall. The following will be on someone else's behalf because we don't trust and believe God. But we stand solid on a true foundation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And today I want to talk to you about the truth of the matter. Our subject today is the truth of the matter. What are we believing in? And I know a lot of things is going on in our lives, our homes, our jobs, and wherever you may be, things are happening. But we got to yet stay believing in the truth of the matter. What God has said, what he has spoken, it is the truth of his word. When he speaks the truth, he speaks of himself because he's a God that cannot lie. So the truth of the matter is, God said we are to know the truth. And when we know the truth, we will what? Be free. So when you know the truth of God's word... You can speak to whatever matter that try to come against you and it have to flee. I know we're going through in these perilous of time, but let me tell you something. The enemy is busy, but he's not busier than your God or my God. God knew about this. He knew about this. So what is the truth of the matter? Are we going to believe or are we not? Are we going to repent like God is saying and turn from our wicked ways or not? What are we going to believe, church? And for those who don't know him, for those who don't know our Lord and Savior, if you don't, I'm asking you, no, I'm pleading, I'm begging with you, come, accept him into your heart, accept him into your life, let him be Lord over your life, follow him in truth and righteousness. I'm telling you, my sisters and brothers, I'm telling you all those who don't know, accept him today. There's an urgency. There's an urgency, God's people. He's telling us, he said, the truth of the matter is we got to come out from among them. Be holy for he is holy. Touch no unclean thing. Get your house in order. All these God is speaking to us. All this God is telling us today. So why is it important for us to believe? The truth of the matter. How can we know the truth of the matter? We know that God is a spirit. And when we worship him, we worship him in spirit and in truth. And I know sometimes it's hard for us to believe. Now what we see around us, yes, that's tangible. We can, we can touch it and, and we can do this and we can, we can see it with our natural eye. But let me tell you something, my sisters and brothers. God is saying there's a crossover that's coming. Who? There's a crossover that's coming. And scripture for that is in Mark 4, 32 to 41. Please read it in your devotion time. There's a crossover that's coming, church. It's coming. And if you read that scripture, you will see where there were some other boats out there on the water when the storm came. So that's telling me that they got caught up in the storm also. And some other people that's hearing my voice, some other people that, 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 that don't believe. You in a storm too. But are you going to believe the truth of the matter that what God has spoken he will do? Do we believe that what he said that this slipped up on him? No. The truth of the matter is, is that we are to know that in the truth of the matter there is liberty. In the truth of the matter there is freedom. 
what God has said to you and I, what God has said to the believers, what God has said to Zion, what God has said to the church, it is the truth. There's a hedge of protection around you. It might not look like to you, but we got to see this thing in the spirit. That's the truth of the matter. You know, I'm, I'm going to go to Job and I want to read something to you. It's in Job 1, 1 through 9. And it's a scripture where some things was about to happen. And it's called the testing of Job. So what God had placed around Job, I want you to see this thing in the spirit. What God has around Job, what God has around you today, bring it forward to today. That same hedge that was around Job is around you. And the enemy know it. That's why he had to consult God. But God is asking us to stand. Come out from among them. Touch no unclean thing. Be ye holy. Get your house in order. There's about to be a crossover. Some of us ain't going to cross over. The word of God reads in, first, in uh, uh, Job 1. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God. And he hated evil. That's the truth of the matter. We are to hate evil. And, and there was, uh, was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yokes of oxen, and 500 she asses, and a very great household. So to this man was the greatest of all men of the East. And his sons went and, uh, went and fasted and feasted in their home, in their houses, where every one his day has sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their fasting were gone about, that Job sent, sent and uh, sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. So that tells me right there, as a leader, as a, a, a head of his household, he knew that his sons and daughters perhaps had got intoxicated so he went and made offerings unto God. In other words, he went repenting unto God for his household. I'm still in verse 5. It may be that my sons have sinned. Okay, that's proven. And cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job, <clears throat> thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of, of God came to pre present themselves before the Lord. The sons of God, we know, I believe they was heavenly beings, the angels of God, they came to present themselves unto God, to remember to worship him and to praise him. Okay? But guess who else came along? This is the truth of the matter. The enemy, Satan, Satan, he came alone. Among them. Might shock some of you guys, but uh, when the other angels came, it's the truth of the matter. When they came unto God, you got to remember that the enemy was created by God also. So he came alone among them. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence thou comest? And Satan answered the Lord. He got to answer him. You might not believe it, but Satan do tell the truth when he's talking to his creator. Listen to what the enemy said. He said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, 
Hast thou considered my servant who? Job. That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and hate evil. Listen at what the enemy said to God, his creator also. And I want you to understand this. See this spiritually as uh, even the enemy is accusing you because he's the accuser of the brethren. Okay? Think of this. What God said he has for you is for you. What God said he has done for you, he has done for you. But a lot of times we don't believe it. So it got to be our belief and it got to be our faith because we're not believing the truth of the matter. Okay? Verse 9. Then Satan answered and said, answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for now? Listen to what he said. He said, Has, has thou uh, made a hedge about him and his house and all that he had over on, over, on, on, on every side? That blessed me right there. Because when the enemy was consulting our father concerning, let's bring it forward to the fuck about us. He knows the enemy, Satan, he, he knows what's around us. So if we can just see that spiritually. When God said, you are in my hand. When God said, I have put a hedge of protection around you. That's the truth of the matter. But we don't believe it at times. Because of what we go through in our life. Because of what we go through in our homes with our children, our grandchildren, our, or our co-worker, or our boss. There's a hedge of protection around you. Hmm. The enemy sees it. And he knows. He knows that there's something around you which is a hedge. That God has placed. Hmm. And the truth of the matter, there is no, 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 no sorrow. God said that uh, he adds no sorrow. Proverbs 10, 22. Please write these scriptures down. Please, ma'am. Proverbs 10, verse 22. <clears throat> the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. The blessings of the Lord. That's the truth of the matter. Oh, I'm going through, Sister Mitchell. The blessings of the Lord. He adds no sorrow. <laughs> Woo, glory. No sorrow. Amen. And now, let's go on. He said, also, there is no shadow of turning. That's in James 1.17. Write that down, please. In the truth of the matter, there is no doubt of who the true and living God is. There is no doubt of who he is. <laughs> then there should be no doubt of who you are. There's a hedge around you. There's been blessings spoken over you. So why do we fear, even in these perilous of time, even in this journey? Why are we fearing? Repent and do what God say. Come from among them. Touch no unclean thing. Be holy. Get your house in order, church. My sisters and brothers, we got to do this right. Hey, yeah, the Lord, we got to do it right. Hallelujah. Get our houses in order. The truth of the matter is we have to know who the true and living God is. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the true and living God. Know who you are in him. You are chosen people of God. You are Zion. He said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. See, 
I think a lot of times we get in our mind that God think like we do. He don't think that way. That's why he tell us to renew our mind. He's a spirit. God is not a carnal God. That's why he's the enmity against him. Our carnality. God, let this mind be in you, which is also where in Christ Jesus. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There are a lot of things that's happening in this crossover. God is separating some things. And he's separating us from some people. Even family members. Even loved ones. He's holy. He's a holy God. And as believers, we must remember, in the truth of the matter, we know that there are instructions that God has given us. And we're going to talk about those in a minute. In the truth of any matter, that's not the matter of God. We are allowed to speak the truth to that matter that it will cease. What has happened, we as the body of believers, we as Zion, have not spoken truth. To that lie that it can be dispelled. Because we don't want to know the truth of the matter. But all oh, that's a shaking and a breaking and a remaking and an awakening going on in the earth. The truth really does matter. God said, I know mine. And minds know me. They have a heart to receive. They have eyes to see. And they have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying what to the church. Come on, Zion. What's the truth of your matter? Have we been so deceived by the ways of the world and the doctrine of men and the doctrine of demons that we don't know the truth of the matter? I want to, uh, this word is an encouragement to you. Not to tear you up or to tear you down, but if you're feeling convicted, praise God. It convicted me. Because there are a lot of things I had swapped for what I was seeing instead of believing what God had spoken. I had to get back to the truth of the matter. God, you said that. I don't care what somebody else said. You said it. So let every man be a liar, but our God, he is the truth. He's Yah. He cannot lie. Never will he lie. That's the truth of the matter. See, in this truth of the matter, when we speak truth to a matter, what is a lie, what is deception and deceit, we have to understand, I need you to hear me spiritually here. When we speak truth, to a matter, and we know that that matter is not of God, we need to automatically understand that there, he, 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 here's the truth and here's the matter. If this is the truth and this is something that God said do, don't do, then we don't do it. But when we begin to speak truth to that matter, there's a shift that goes on. Why the shift goes on? Because when the shift goes on, <laughs> It causes things to change for our good, but God get the glory. So we as the body of believers, we as the people of God, we must speak truth to every matter that's not of God. If he said be holy, then we be holy. Yeah, that's coming to separation. It's a lot of false things going on out there and people saying they're hearing God say this and hearing God say this. You better make sure that you have ears to hear what God is saying to you. What the Spirit of God is speaking to you and your household. Because it's like I shared before, every time God raises up a prophetic, you need to understand that the enemy have false prophets. It's all throughout the Word of God, right in here. 
So we're going to speak truth to a lie. And when we begin the body of Christ, we begin to believe as Zion, we begin to rise up and speak truth to that lie, it has to flee. I was at this assembly one time and this man, he was standing up and he was prophesying. And I always wanted the Lord, give me the revelation when one prophet is speaking, the other ones be still or be quiet, but you know, discern the spirit by the spirit. And uh, this person that was up speaking was not speaking truth. He was speaking condemnation. Even when God admonishes people, he admonished them in love to draw them, not to drive them away. Remember that. Even when he admonishes us or corrects us, he corrects us in love to draw us to him, not to repel us. So he was standing. And it was a very much a prophetic person in, in that assembly. I've never seen nothing like this, but that once. The person had, he, 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 was, he was very bold. He was bold for God and the things of God. And he stood up while this uh, man was uh, speaking. And he said, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, excuse me. Can you please have a seat, please? That's not God. <laughs> I said, wow, that's awesome. And guess what? When truth rises, lies have to sit. Or they be dispelled. Or they come to the revelation of who they are serving and turn to God. First time I seen that, I said, now that. That was God. Because you can discern the spirit that was over the people while this person was speaking. And I said, no, no, no. That, that, hey, 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 that ain't God. But I thank God that someone had the boldness and the strength to, to stand up and say, no, that's not the truth. In love, he didn't raise his voice or nothing. He was humble unto God. Excuse me, sir. That's not the truth. Can you sit down? <laughs> he spoke to that matter. He spoke to it. And I said, God, I thank you. And so that's what's blessing me because it really showed me something and it taught me something that when we speak the truth, even to power, that's false. We can't agree with everything and think it's the truth. It's not. We must speak the truth in love. But when we speak the truth even in love, there's a power and authority that comes along with the truth. Not ours, but God's. His and His alone. And people know. They know. But those who have ear to hear, those who have a spirit of discernment, they know. But a lot of times, we're set they're right along with that matter, deceiving a whole lot of other people, knowing that it's a lie. But God said he wants his people to know the truth of the matter, of who he truly is and who you truly are. In the truth of the matter, we must believe. Turn with me, please, to John 6, 47. And in the truth of the matter, we must believe God. Not man, believe God. Now we see here in John 6, this is concerning when Jesus was feeding the 5,000. And when you get down to verse 25, he starts with concerning the everlasting food. Jesus, which he's speaking of himself with the bread of life. Okay. But we want to look at verse 47 because we're talking about when you know the truth of the matter and when God has spoken it, you believe it. 
Because things that we, when, when God speaks things to us and we don't believe it, you're going you gonna to waver. So when someone comes along with something that, 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 that's enticing, that, that, that looks good and to the, your natural eye and, and feels good, you get that little tingly thing to your flesh, you know, you're going to waver. You're going to say, now what, 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 now what, did I really hear God? Was that really? You're beginning to doubt. And then like James would take talking to when he was talking to the believers, he said, <laughs> You're unstable, not in some of your ways, but all your ways. But we as the body of Christ, we as Zion, we got to believe what God has said. Amen. Let's look at verse 47 here. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples. He said, Listen, verily, 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 if you do a, a word search on that word there. It, that this thing is important. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. I want y'all to listen to this. Now, this is what I'm telling you. Disciples, believers, saints. This is what I'm telling you. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. He that believeth on me hath what? Everlasting life. Look at the word believe. Hmm. He that believeth on me has everlasting life. So the truth of the matter is what I believe, what I believe in the name of Jesus on him, I have everlasting life. But as we go through the things in this, in this, in this, in this world or uh, in this dimension, this three-dimensional world here, we forget that our life is eternal, but it's only in Jesus Christ. Yeshua, the Messiah. Only in him. Go with me to John 7, verse 38. Things happen when you believe the truth of a matter. Look what happened. It's a very familiar scripture, perhaps to a lot of us. 38. Hmm. Okay, let's start at verse 37. Because this is dealing with things beginning to run because we believe the truth of the matter of what God has said, what Jesus has spoken to us by his spirit, the Ruach of Kadesh. We believe what he has said. Okay? Verse 37 of, of, of uh, John 7. In the last days, a great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he, he cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. <laughs> he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall do what? Flow rivers of living water. So that's telling me right there with the truth of this matter thing that God is teaching us today by his spirit. That when I believe the matter that what God has spoken, if any man come unto me today and believe, what the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's the truth of the matter. A lot of us who believe, we don't believe that the water that's within us by his word, by the washing of his word, that's in Ephesians, we don't believe that there's a river in us. Hmm. So when we speak to people who are weary, who are hurting, who need a healing, who need deliverance, that water should come in because it's the word of God. It's the matter that God has put in us that is the truth. So because I believe the truth of the matter, something should flow out of me spiritually. Hallelujah. I, you know, I get, I get excited some. I get excited, not sometimes, but all the time, when I'm talking about the things in the Word of God because this is an encouraging word to me because sometimes my, my sisters and my brothers, I go through too. I know we go through. We all do. But we got to believe the truth of God's Word. Even in this time, stop being afraid. Fear will kill you. That's what he want to do. That's what he want to do. He don't want you to love. 
So how the law can now unfair? I can't do it. I can't do it. Law use wisdom. That's not what I'm saying. That, that's not what I'm saying. Yes, we got to use wisdom. But don't let fear grip our heart. Understand the truth of the matter of God's word. When we open our mouth, living water should flow out of us in truth. In truth. Hmm. This is a teaching in the Word of God when Jesus was teaching the disciples, and he he told them, he said, and I'm paraphrasing. He said, even though I'm standing before you guys right now and I'm teaching you this, he said, but still, some of you all still don't what believe. Still don't believe because I, you got to show me some God. You got to show me. It remind me of when uh. The servant of God went up to receive the commandments. And the people got impatient and they wanted to see something. And they went down and they started making a golden calf and they started taking all the bangles and the gold and stuff and making something that they can see. So they had taken the truth of God's word that the man of God had spoken to them, which was Moses at that time. They had taken that truth of that word and began to switch it and believe the lie. And I'll say to you this day, my sisters and brothers, it seems like we are back in that place today. Some of us believed a lie. We began to make a golden calf. Because we don't believe the truth of the matter in God's word. And what he has said. Yes, some are dying. But guess what? Did it slip up on God? Nay, I say no. Some are leaving before this time. Did that slip up on God? No. Did God, oh, he didn't know about what we were going to go through. Yeah, he did. He allowed it. The truth of the matter is, is living water flowing from you in truth concerning the matter that we are in now? Can we stop worshiping these, these, these golden calves in our lives? Whether it be our cars, our homes, Money, your position, your title. All of these are golden calves. But God said we got to believe the truth. Believe the truth of the matter, my sisters and brothers, and I guarantee you, you'll see God. See what God is saying to us in the spirit of the matter. And I guarantee you, it will manifest. I believe that. I truly believe that because it has manifested in my life. I had to come out of my natural of my carnality and believe what God has said. What God has already done, even for health, even sometimes even for finances. I had to believe God that I was healthy, wealthy, and wise. I believe God was concerned about the things that he had spoken to me or my seed. I had to believe God for some things, even if for my marriage, because it was the truth that he, it matters to him. You matter to him. We matter to him. He loves us so much. It really does matter. See, when we believe the truth of God's word, 
and how it really matters. Spiritually things <laughs> begin to happen because of that shift I was telling you about. The truth or untruth, when the truth come in, it dispels the untruth. And that's what's happening even today. Truth is coming in. True prophets are beginning to rise. The false prophets have got to what? Be dispelled. But you got to have an ear to hear. You got to have eyes to see. And you got to have a heart to receive. What God, by His Spirit, the Ruha HaKadosh, is speaking to the church. We must have that. If we don't have that, we have nothing. We have nothing. And it's all woven in His love that He has for His people. Then it is manifest in the nation. You want to see healing come to a nation? Repent. Turn to God. Turn to God. Hallelujah. Why is it important? Why is it important, my sisters and brothers, for us to believe the truth of God's word? Why is it important for it to matter? Because if you turn to 2 Chronicles 4, and I'm about to close up here. If you turn to 2 Chronicles 4, you see why it is important for us to believe the truth of the matter. I'm reading verse 4. The word of God reads, In whom God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. I say that again. And whom the God of this world has blinded. The God of this world has blinded them that believe not. So if we don't believe the truth of the matter, my sisters and brothers, we need to understand the God of this age has blinded many. That's in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. 4, verse 4. My last scripture. So why is it important for us to believe the truth of the matter? Because there are promises that come along with this truth. There are promises. Because what God has said, He will do. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Please write that down. 13, 5, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's a promise to the truth of every matter that's in our life. God has not left us. God forbid, as Paul was saying when he was beginning to minister to the, to the wrong, he said, no, has God forsaken his people? No. He said, I will never leave them nor forsake them. That's the truth of the matter. Knowing the truth of the matter is a freedom. There is no worries. There are no worries. We must have faith and trust God. There is a liberty in believing that there is the truth of the matter of what God has spoken. In 2 Corinthians 3, 17. 2 Corinthians 3. Now the Lord, it's 3, 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
So that's telling me knowing the truth of the matter of God's word, it liberates us. It liberates us. Amen? It liberates us. So we must understand that. I do appreciate every one of you guys listening. My last thing I want to say, if you do not know Yeshua, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, my prayer is that you give him your life today. That you can know the truth of every matter that he's spoken to you in your life. Please, I encourage you to do that. You can give your life to him today, right now, in all sincerity. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to come into your heart. Be your Lord over your life and be your Savior. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from our wicked ways. He'll come in. I guarantee you, he will come. Nobody can judge you. Regardless of what you've done or what you did, nobody can judge you. I'm telling you, there's such an urgency. This crossover is going to happen. I'm seeing it in the spirit. I'm hearing God say it. Every day, I'm hearing God say it. Every day. I was listening to the radio yesterday. I ride with my husband, going out, ride, taking a ride. Guess what come on the radio? Crossover. I said, okay, God, I got it. Same scriptures. Mark 4. So I say to you, invite the Lord Jesus into your heart today. Let him be your Lord and your Savior. Get saved. It's such an urgency. The Lord is such an urgency. Let he who have ear here. Come. Come out of your sin. God loves you. He loves you right where you at. Even if you're in the pig pen, he still loves you. He loves you. Regardless of where you are, regardless of what color you are, He loves you. He loves you so much. Give Him your heart today. Let us close. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you now, Father, for what you've done today. I thank you for the truth of the matter, Lord God. I thank you for your word. Lord, I just pray right now, Lord God, that the word that you spoke to us, Lord, and through us, Lord, God, I pray right now, Lord, God, that it take root, Lord, in good soil. And I pray, Father, for those who are raising their hands now, saying, yes, Lord, come into my life. I want to know the truth about these matters that you're saying in my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me with your water. Wash me in your word. Touch me now, God. Be Lord over my life. Lead and direct me by your spirit. Speak to me. Tell me what I need to do, Father. As I spend time with you. Yes, Lord, I pray. I fast. I seek you daily. But, Father, I know I heard the call there. Such an urgency because you are so soon to come. And, Lord, we don't know when you're coming, but you, you said, be ye so ever ready. And you said in your word, Lord, whoever put their hand to the plow, Father, and let it go is not fit for the kingdom of God. For, Father, we thank you now. We thank you now, God, that our hands is in your hand, and you overtake us, Lord, by covering us in your love. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. His holy name we bring it all. Amen. God bless you, family.